Memory can be considered as a collection of cells. Each cell stores a bit of information, either 0 or 1. But it is not practical to assign a distinct address to each bit location and handle the bits individually. One common approach is to group 8 bits to form a byte and assign distinct address to every byte such that successive addresses refer to successive bytes. Hence, memory can be considered as a collection of addressing units. Each addressing unit is a placeholder of data. The size of each addressing unit is decided by the size of the data that it can hold. Here, each addressing unit holds 1 byte or 8 bits. Now to access data from the memory, either to read or write data, the processor generates an address. The number of lines in the address is decided by the number of addressing units or addressing locations. Here there are 1k locations or 1k addressing units, each unit holding a byte. 1k is 2 power 10. It means there are 1k bytes or 2 power 10 bytes. Now to address each byte uniquely, how many bits are required? 10 bits are required. This address will be of 10 lines. This 10 bit address will be referring to one specific location. Suppose it is to read data from that location. Then the data, the 1 byte or 8 bit data held in that location will be transferred to the data bus. So here every addressing unit, every addressable unit is holding a byte and every addressing is referring to a byte. Thus, this is termed byte addressing. Also here there are 1k locations each holding a byte. So what will be the total size of the memory 1kb. But some systems make use of word addressing. Here, the basic addressable unit is a word. The word length can be anything, maybe 2 bytes or 4 bytes or 6 bytes. It depends upon the data bus size of the CPU or the word length of the CPU. Suppose the processor can handle 4 bytes or 32 bits at a time. Then it may be designed such that 4 bytes or 32 bits can be accessed from the memory with one basic operation. Thus each addressable unit is said to have a word. Here each word is of 4 bytes. The address of each word is actually the address of its first byte. So in word addressing, if we refer to any particular word supposed to read data from that address, it will read 4 bytes starting from the starting address. And here we have 1k words or 2 power 10 words. So to uniquely identify each word, how many lines are required in the address, 10 lines are required in the address. And 1 key words is 2 power 10 words. Each word is of 32 bits. So what is the total size of the memory? 1k into 4 bytes, which is 4 kilobytes. And here each word is holding 4 bytes. Depending upon how the byte addresses are assigned across the word, there are two schemes. Suppose we have to write a 32 bit data onto the word location 0. In the word address 0, we have 4 byte addresses. Now, by placing this data onto this word address, if the least significant byte is placed in the lower byte address, 5f to byte 0, then 2, 3 to byte 1, 1f to byte 2, and 4f to byte 3. Hence, the least significant byte go to the lowermost ad byte address. This scheme is called Little Indian Scheme. And if the least significant byte goes to the higher order byte address, 5f to byte 3, 23 to byte 2, 1f to byte 1, and finally 4f to byte 0. 
This is called big endian method. If the least significant bytes goes to the lower byte address, it's called little endian scheme. And if the least significant bytes go to the higher byte address, it's called big endian scheme. So if we read data from this word location 0, according to big endian scheme, the data read will be the least significant bytes come from the higher byte address. And in little endian scheme, the data read will be the least significant bytes come from the lower byte address.